named The Chinese Professor, and it has resurfaced. It's supposed to highlight what the future might look like if we don't get our spending under control in this country, and China ends up buying most of our debt, effectively owning us. The ad is now part of a $2 million ad buy running on cable networks and select markets until the Sunday after Election Day. And it just happened to air last night, just as the presidential candidates were taking up the contentious issue of defense cuts and our national debt. I will not cut our military budget by a trillion dollars, which is a combination of the budget cuts that the president has, as well as the sequestration cuts. That, in my view, is making, is, is making our future less certain and less secure. Bob, I just need to comment on this. First of all, the sequester is not something that I propose. It's something that Congress has proposed. It will not happen. Well, that came as, a, as news to a lot of the folks on Capitol Hill, uh, and we'll talk about why. Uh, joining me now, Leslie Marshall, who's a syndicated radio talk show host and a Fox News contributor, and Lars Larson, who's a syndicated radio host with Compass Media Networks. So he, the president says it will not happen. But that came as news to everybody on Capitol Hill because right now it's the law that it's going to happen, and he signed the law, and no one's done anything to yep. change it, leading to reactions <laughs> like this one from... Uh, well, first, Lindsey Graham, who says, a Republican senator, who says it's going to happen unless there's some leadership. And John McCain, a Republican, who says we've been begging the president to sit down with us to avoid this. What would what his own defense secretary said would be a devastating blow to our national security, these defense cuts. And he just said, don't worry, sequestration won't happen. And then McCain says he's not a dictator yet. Let me start with you on this, Leslie. What what does he mean? <laughs> What, is it, what does the president mean? Well, first of, for, it's not, it's not for, first of all, now that we live in a fact check world, it can't happen because he said it, and I'm going to take him at, at, at his word, but I've got to say uh, there was oh. a bit of confusion. Although I know Lars is going to say something, uh, the, the bottom line here is the bottom line. If you have my buddies like Lars saying, we need to cut, but we do not cut defense, when even uh, former officials that worked in the Pentagon in the Reagan years are saying, look, if you cut a trillion dollars, it's not going to, if it, over the next 10 to 12 years, it is not going to uh, hinder our national security. We're not going to be putting ourselves at risk. And, and here, and here is an example where, here is an example that coupled with, I believe, the uh, loyalty to Grover Norquist, as opposed to the loyalty to the constituents that elected both Republicans and Democrats into office uh, to work together to reduce this debt, we're not going to get anywhere unless politics is put aside, regardless of who's elected oh, no. president next time around. What of that point? What of those points that those Republican senators were trying to make, Lars? You know, uh, Graham saying, "Well, we need leadership in order to avoid yes. this from happening." Right now, it is written into law that it is happening. It is, and the law is the law that was suggested by President Obama's chief of staff put in there at the, at the insistence of the Democrats, and by the way, as you said, signed into law by President Obama. I mean, God forbid that someday our road warrior iron lady Megyn Kelly ends up working for Chicom bosses instead of Roger Ailes. Oh my goodness, we can't let that happen. Let's cut the budget. Let's rein in government spending. And by the way, as candidate, Obama, as candidate Romney is suggesting, let's go make some more money. Let's drill for oil. Let's dig up coal. And let's have our leadership sit down, a real president who can work across the aisle, which Romney has a history of doing in Massachusetts, and which Obama has had no history of doing in Illinois, no history of doing as a United States senator, and zero history of doing as a president. The law said this president was supposed to write a budget. He's chosen not to do so for three plus years. That's the problem. That's why we're heading up to these sequestration cuts. And for the president to sit there last night right in front of you and say, it wasn't me that did it, it was the Congress. Apparently, he didn't take enough law classes to understand that laws don't become laws unless the Congress passes them and the president signs them. Maybe somebody should wise up Professor Obama. That, I mean, look, Leslie, can we, we can all agree, the three of us, it, it, it was both the, the fault of the lawmakers who got him the bill and his fault because he signed it. You can't just you can't sign a law as the president and then just pawn off all the responsibility on somebody else, can you? 
Leslie can. No, I, I, no. Oh, come on, <laughs> Lars. No, no. But Lars, uh, since you, Tell since why it's not his fault. everybody from last night to today, being from Massachusetts, you have to remember that when Mitt Romney was governor, to your point, Lars, that he worked with the Democrats, he was a liberal when he was the governor of Massachusetts. He was a liberal Republican, <laughs> a left-leaning Republican, and you know what? He had he to work with the Democrats. He worked across the aisle. That's the only way you're going to get anything done in Massachusetts because 87 percent of the legislation uh, were Democrats. Democratic. When you look at now, so Leslie, tell me why he couldn't do it with the Congress. Lars, when you have a minority leader that says the agenda of your party is to unseat this president, how could anybody? Oh, name that's Barack an old Obama line, Megan. With the Republicans, Megan. Uh, let's that was just Mitch compare the is, he, he later clarified that he meant it was his top political goal was to get Understood. President Obama but, out but, of office. But, <laughs> here's the thing. The president proposed a budget. Every single Democrat in the House of Representatives voted down the president's budget. Then Paul Ryan proposed a budget, and it was passed by the House of Representatives. And then good old Harry Reid sat there and said, I won't even let it have a vote. And you know why? Because he knew it probably would have to pass. I mean, at least the pressure would be there on all those Democrat senators well, and, and saying, I, I, you're the I mean, only I, I, ones holding on up a budget. That, Lars. Let me ask you this, Lars, because on top of that, you know, that, that Chinese okay. ad, the Chinese professor thing is, is getting in, yeah. in large measure to the debt, you know, the debt that we're under. And that came up yeah. at the last debate about, or two debates ago, talking about how, you know, we're $16 trillion in debt. The president said, well, I appointed this committee, but then the commission was totally ignored. ignored him. And, and, and the question is, where is the leadership on our debt? debt, which is a serious issue. They're so worried about the moms in the country. Moms worried about that. We're worried about passing it on to our kids, are we not, Leslie? And then I'll go to Lars for the last word. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Uh, hey, Megan, I've always said if a woman were in charge, we wouldn't be having these problems necessarily, but we'll have to see in the future, hopefully. Like Nancy when, when, we, when we look, when we, when we look <laughs> at leadership, the leader can only work with the willing bodies of the House and the Senate. Lars, to your point regarding it past the House Republican majority, of course, and a Democratic majority in the Senate, so that's no surprise. But one of the way, when you have people saying, look, here are... The Republicans agreed to half the original spending cuts that the president and Democrats proposed. And, and when you're talking about a trillion dollars being shaved off the military, when now we're pulling out of Afghanistan, we're out of Iraq, and when you look historically at Presidents Eisenhower, Nixon, Reagan, etc., whenever we finished a, a conflict, uh, that they would reduce the defense spending, the military spending that was customary. Why aren't Republicans agreeing to that? That could help to reduce okay. the debt. That could help to reduce the amount of spending okay. that, we're, that we're doing right now. I'll give you the last word, Lars. Megan, the, the rest of the government is not a rubber stamp, Leslie. The president has to work with these people. He's made no effort to do that. We need to take one of those bayonets that the president thinks the United States military doesn't use anymore and start trimming smartly from the budget, but not from national defense and Paris down to the 1917 Navy. All right, guys, we'll leave it at that. Good debate. <laughs> Leslie and Lars, as always. Thanks. Thanks, Megan.